Hello everyone, and welcome back to Etalan. Today's video will be the second part to my previous video, The Potion Master. This project is the customization of a Rainbow High doll. Previously, I stripped the doll, created resin eyes, gave her a new face and some lashes. In this video, I'll be exploring the creation of the character's design and story. Before we get started, however, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it so much. Let's get started. Previously, I created insert eyes and placed them into the back of the head with some blue tack for a less permanent placement in case of maintenance later on in the doll's life. So I'm still able to access the head hole and remove the eyes I created this wig. I've never done a wig on a doll before. Typically, I just glue the hair straight to the vinyl. I wrapped the head in some cling film to protect the face. I wrapped her head in a layer of polyester material and secured it to the head with a rubber band. Once it was placed correctly, I lathered the material in craft glue. Once the glue is dried, it'll be like a little shell that will fit on her head perfectly. While the wig cap is drying, I'll make her hair. Her hair will be made out of 100% acrylic yarn fibres and brushed out, pressed and glued to make small wefts. I was honestly so surprised by how much hair it took to actually make this doll wig. It took about three times the amount of wefts that I would normally make for a Monster High doll. Of course the head is a lot bigger, but I was like, gosh, this is just never ending. To make the wefts, I glued the pressed yarn to the back of a plastic lid. Once it was set, I'll cut the glue and the yarn to size and place it on the wig. As you can see now, the wig cap is completely dry, so I was able to cut it to match her head perfectly. I was pretty chuffed with how it turned out to be honest. Using some craft glue, I'll be placing the wefts onto the wig cap one by one. If you yourself were thinking of creating a wig as well, I'd probably recommend also wrapping the head of the doll um, when you're actually adding the wefts, just it would be an added layer of protection. I didn't do this however, um, I live dangerously. <laughs> I work my way up to the top of the scalp. Once I was at the top, I'll create a parting. Getting the wefts, and instead of gluing them down facing like the others, I'll be placing them facing outwards and gluing them right in the middle of the head. This is so when the weft is flipped back onto itself, it will create a parting. To cover those weft tracks, I'll add another weft on top of that weft to blend it into the rest of the hair. In regards to her hair colour, I tossed up a couple of different ideas. I thought maybe silver, but then I realised it would be way too similar to lavender. I thought red, but I thought as well that it didn't fit in with the eye colour. 
I ended up landing on black as it emphasized the red color of her eyes, but it also brought out the darkness within her skin and made her look really pretty. This character's design is heavily inspired by the art of stop motion animation, specifically Leica Studios and Tim Burton. I feel like when they explore period pieces, they tend to really emphasize the colors and designs of these characters to fit a very stylized version of the brief. I wanted to do this with my doll as well. And I'll first be exploring that with the hair. For her hair, I didn't make it too long. Her original was honestly way too long for her design. Though in saying that this is a toy for a child and thus it's like that so that the child can braid it and play with it and such. For my custom, however, I'll be shaping it to match her face a lot better. While the original style was lovely, I think shaping the hair for the face shape will make her features just emphasized and look more beautiful. I decided on keeping the hair relatively long, but just shaping it with scissors and a razor. I cut the hair just to under the breasts, and gave her a nice micro fringe. I think micro fringes on rounder faces are honestly so beautiful. For the hair, instead of leaving it just blunt, I'll be instead shaping it to match the roundness of her face. I'm going to be cutting away the sides of her hair, the shortest pieces coming up to around her cheekbones and then going lower and lower to blend in with the longness of her hair, before reaching her ears. I found that doing this with rounder faces really emphasizes the gorgeous bone structure that they have, and really shows off the beauty of the face shape. With a felting needle, I'll be adding some detail to her hair. With the leftover yarn fibers from making the hair wefts, I'll be felting, I think that's the verb to use. <laughs> um, basically, I'll be felting two spheres. Apparently, when you're felting, you can use like a sponge or something. Um, I didn't have one, so I just used a tea towel. Once I created the circles, I placed a needle in the middle of it, and pinned them to my third arm. You're probably thinking, what on earth is she doing? But trust the process. Basically, what I'm doing here is an old cosplayer wig trick, but fun-sized. What I'm doing is creating hair buns. Well, if you're doing this on a larger scale, you would use something like a styrofoam ball, but as this is miniature-sized, I felt it a circle to act in the same way. If you're making hair buns, you can just add a felted ball to the hair and it will act in the same way. But I love to be a little bit more extra when it comes to making hair. Using pressed wefts, the same that I used to make the wig, I'll be wrapping the ball around with them. This will imitate the look of a bun that's made of real hair. While the design itself can be really hard to see on really dark hair, I wanted to do this as it really adds lovely detail to the design. The time period brief, I guess, that I wanted to go with for this doll is to go with an early Edwardian, late Victorian, which is the time period depicting 1870s to 1910s time period within the United Kingdom. While this is not an exact replica of what you would see during the time period, I love to stylize period styles when it comes to my characters. I love the hair making in regards to character design, and I really find it transforms the character and brings story to their design. Like with the Tang Dynasty style for Toph, Dutch and German braids for Lavender, fantasy hair for my fawns in both Eurocentric and Afrocentric styles, and a Japanese hime cut for my no face. With this doll, I based her hairstyle off the style that you would see for Edwardian and Victorian girls, but I stylized it so it had the period aesthetic, but was very stylized. 
To blend them in a little bit better, I braided some yarn as well and added them to the base of the bun and hid the ends of it with a bow. Adding some detail to her hair, I printed out two mini ostrich skulls on my 3D printer. I made these and put them in the hair for a more macabre flair to her style. I painted the skulls with some grey and white shades and then coated them with resin. For this doll, I wanted her to be a potion master. And what's a potion master without potions? Using my UV resin, pigment and dried flowers, I create her mixtures. When I was creating her character, I imagined her knowledgeable, in the same way my grandfather was. Remember when I was a child back home in Wales? I was goofing about on the edge of the forest while my grandfather tended to the animals. I saw him pulling weeds from the ground and I thought I could help. I saw a weed and I grabbed it without thought. Little did I know it was a nettle plant. My hand immediately went red and started bubbling with sores. I ran over and showed him. He looked at my hand and started looking around. Always a man of little words. He walked over and pulled the leaves off another bush crushed it, and started rubbing it into my hand. The pain immediately started fading away. He told me if I am ever stung again, to look for a bush with an oval leaf near the nettle plant itself, a dock leaf, and rub it on the painful areas. The chemicals from the dock leaves will counteract the reaction to the nettle leaf, a natural remedy. I always thought that was the most magical experience. I thought he was like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. I imagined this doll would do the same. I imagined her character to be a potion master within a small village in the UK. She would have a little wooden shop in the middle of the town. The shop would be filled floor to ceiling with jars upon jars of oddities. Any customer that went in wouldn't know where to look. To look at one jar is to be distracted by another. No matter the ailment though, they always knew what to give you. You could say something as vague as, I have a headache and immediately it would be as if fireworks lit up in their head, enthralled by the potion combinations flying through their mind. She would quickly jump from jar to jar, muttering to herself, Peppermint? Ginger? Donkwai? Donkwai, yes, yes, that would work. Before you know, she's mixed up a special tonic for you, packaged with the love and care from a master of her craft. When she's not in the shop, she's roaming the county, collecting rare wildflowers and plants. Ask her what leaf it is and she would be able to answer without hesitation, giving you the common name, scientific name, what the plant can be used for, an encyclopedia of natural knowledge, with the opportunity to thrive in her passion and craft. On to her clothes. I wanted to give her something relatively simplistic in design. For her clothing design, I decided on going with an Edwardian skirt and blouse pairing, but make it a little bit more stylized. Something I feel quite critical of with this doll's original design was how busy it was, with such a large head and long hair and long legs, accompanied with form-fitting clothes on such a small torso. It confined the chest and tummy area to look overcrowded. 
In saying this, I wanted to preface that this is just an observation and analysis of the character design from the lens of someone who, who isn't the target audience, but also someone who spends every day making dolls and toys for myself. While I personally felt the design was too busy, there are people out there that think the design is perfect and that's completely valid. I just wanted to make sure I preface that as an opinion, as it isn't a blanket statement of a complete critique of the doll line. The last thing I want to do is discourage someone's artistic endeavours and personal taste. I decided on creating an outfit that would complement her design. Referencing characters like Aggie from Paranorman, and Weird Girl from Frank and Weenie, and even Bee from Bee and Puppycat, I wanted to give her a rounder design. All of the characters mentioned are very top heavy in design. By matching the width of the doll's head to the skirt that I'll be creating, it'll help pull the torso out. It'll help pull the torso and make the eyes focus less on the head, but instead focus on the whole design. To elongate the design, I made the skirt a midi length, stopping just above the ankles, with a striped pattern. This will give the illusion of a longer torso while keeping the original body but having a rounder design. I also chose the stripes, as during the late Victorian era, the striped dress was a trend for a while. You can even see this trend vaguely represented in Victoria from Corpse Bride. The choice of the skirt and blouse design, however, was to replicate the popularity of the style with, within the Edwardian era. Mixing these two aesthetics together from different time periods gives me the vague style aesthetic that I was wanting, without focusing too much on the specific historical accuracy. For the skirt, I'll be doing a basic pleat skirt, but modifying it. Hemming the skirt sides on my sewing machine, I will also be making pleats. This will be done by folding the material and sewing over them to keep them in place. I will make one that goes to the ankles, and then add another layer on top that will puff up in the middle of the skirt, to add width that will match the width of the buns on her head. For the blouse, I made the sleeves really long compared to the arms so I could make them puffy. I did this by doing a running stitch about a centimetre above the end of the blouse, which will later be pulled with a thread which will gather the material on the sleeves and give off the look that I want. Off camera I also made a collar that I'll be sewing onto the neckline.
Adding some accessories to her design, I also made a satchel. I wanted to have this doll in the moment, almost, as if she was on her way to the moors to find wildflowers for her potions. I'm terrible with explaining sewing processes, so I'm really sorry about that. But with a square, a rectangle, and a long piece of fabric, I'll be making the base and sewing the sides together. I didn't want to make the satchel too fancy, as I don't imagine you would bring your best bag when you're going to be filling it with dirt and plants. Grabbing the potions that we made before, I sew them with a thick black twine to give it a more realistic, rustic, homemade feeling. I sewed them to the bag, and also sewed some small scissors to the outside of the bag, for easy access when she wants to snip off leaves and flowers. Once they were sewed on, I'll assemble her. Thank you all so much for watching. It truly means so much that you've joined me on this journey to make the Potion Master. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below and if you have any feedback or suggestions or what you'd like to see me make in the future. I'd like to give a special thanks to my Patreons for supporting me on my doll making endeavors. Head over to my Patreon if you want to support my creations. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.